Ten dog, yeah. Labrador Retriever. Mm. I'm gonna bring him in someday. Great. Awesome. What's his name? Jake. Jake. He has a, he's a Facebook week? page. He has a Facebook page? Yeah. Does he post on his wall? Yeah. My dog and my cat have Twitters. <laughs> follow Mike's cat. I don't even have a Twitter. <laughs> Me neither. As long as you're not James's dog, you can follow Mike's cat. cat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I tweeted like, the dog know, is really pissing me off today. <laughs> <laughs> you bring it up? I was going to. I can't remember what it is. Don't <laughs> hack into his account. Dog's He's the be, custodian for his dog. He's going to be pissed. He knows where, yeah. he knows where his doggy biscuits come from. Is it age limited in dog years or? Yeah, how old is, you know, it's not seven years every year. First three years equal yeah, 21 sure. years. Seriously? Yeah, and then after that, stop counting. It's never quite seven years. So the first three are sevens, and then after that, it's what? Well, yeah, it's. There he is. Three, four, That's stop. a dog. I'm not sure it's actually here's three, seven. Here's Jake of, right here. You know. Oh, oh puppy. Oh, oh, he's a yellow lab. Yeah, he's got he's a little a black dot on his head. Oh, it's the only from his black. His, his parents are black. <gasps> and that's so all he has to recognize. And he's. he's I wonder, so, I, he must be recessive, double recessive genes. Yeah, he's he on the couch oh, over the cute. arm rest like this. Look at that face. Look at the picture. He's going to get a lot of babies. Look at the picture of his body. He's all. He's so does he get, does he get, he's got you know, mail from poodles and stuff? Does he? Does he get what? Mail from poodles. <laughs> he's busy. He, you know, he's a people so dog. He doesn't care just, about other dogs. He doesn't like other dogs. How much does he weigh? About 96, 97 pounds. He's big. He's skinny. Let me see him. Oh, oh, he went away. Oh, oh puppy. Oh, is he cute? Is that now, who's the black lab? That's just a friend that we visited. Uh, but like I said, he's he, smiling. He, he's he's smiling. smiling. Yeah, he does. He's smiling. <laughs> oh, look at that smile. He, 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 you'll see his lips turn up when you do oh, something he likes. Look at that face. Um, oh, he's, he's a happy dog. He looks like you, James. <laughs> oh, how old I is know. he? He's, he's, he looks he's like really you. attached to me. He's he about does. six. I want a lab someday. I have a oh, he's wonderful. Uh -huh. he, he just listens so well to you. He's so smart. You know. They are smart dogs. I don't know what I'm doing with him. He's the best dog I ever had. And I've had probably about 15 labs in my life. Really? Wow. I th the most I had at one time was three. You should breed him then. Well, I really was never interested in that. I'm just saying, if he's such a good Is dog, he you might make good. Oh, yeah. Well, he was actually a, 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 a runt. Rescue? A, no. Was he? He was a rescue dog. He, he was, was a rescue. Yeah. But of, of his brothers and sisters, he was the one that was always get jumped runs. on, and he was big, he was the biggest one. But he they all jumped on him. He didn't want to mm -hmm. He's a people dog. He's oh. just one of the biggest. Uh, oh, that's great. I miss funny. having a dog. Well, the, the best part about it is like the info here. You know, uh, let me tell you. Are you recording this dog conversation? I am actually. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't use okay, it his employer that. is LabCorp of America. LabCorp. And his job is sniffing things. <laughs> He went to call the college. He went to was dog college, um. and his concentration pretty good, but easily distracted by dog burns, <laughs> religious views, furry dogma, political views, independent. <laughs> <laughs> favorite quotations: "Who let the dogs out?" <laughs> his favorite music is Three Dog Night." His books: Marley and Me. His movie, Bob Marley, <laughs> and his television was Lassie. So, his activities are sleeping and eating. And that voice is James Buckley. This is the Seclair Chatterbox Podcast. <laughs> talking about the love of dogs. The Seclair Chatterbox Podcast. And he's sharing with us the Facebook page for his dog. Jake Buckley. So all of you sweet dogs out there who want to get to know a sweet dog, get on that Facebook page. And put your paws on his wall. Yes, yeah, look, wow. for, look for Jake on uh, Facebook. And uh, be ask uh, ask for his friendship. He'll, he'll, he has a lot of friends. He has more friends than most people I know. He will lick your face. Beware. Uh, excellent way to start this one. <laughs> exactly the topic we were trying to get to here but uh but hey welcome to this claire chatterbox uh the show where we talk about what's on our mind and topics of the day and our experiences and our facebook pages uh i'm like sort director of web media here at Claire tears of mason joins me once again how you doing today good how are you and we have two students with us we like to touch base with the students you know see how it's going how, how they're enjoying their experience here at Claire. uh go ahead and introduce yourselves um my name's katie um, PA student at Duquesne. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I'm Elizabeth Derogi. I'm also a physician assistant student from Duquesne University. Oh, so you're Happy both at the same place, yep. mm -hmm. studying mm -hmm. in the same classes. Mm -hmm. How'd you end up at the same placement? Is that that's kind of unusual? That would be random. That's fate. Fate. <laughs> fate. It is. Yeah. Fate puts you together, puts you in the same school, and puts you in the same same placement. So you're doing your psych rotation. And yes. how long does your rotation last? Approximately five and a half weeks. Five and a half weeks. Okay. Yeah. So what what's your goal when you come to to a place like C. Claire? What's your what's your goal for your rotation? Besides survival. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Passing. 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 I don't know, I think it's about the experience more than anything, just to see what you can, do what you can. Okay. Did you get to choose this place as opposed to, or did you just get assigned? Just randomly just assigned. Just random assignment. Yes. Okay, so out of all of the psych potential places, uh, Western Psych and, I don't know, where else do they, they send you for psych rotations? I know there's a uh, north side and south side. Mercy. Mercy. Yeah. Mercy Behavioral Health. Behavior yeah. Okay, so you ended up here. Well, you have friends who are at these other places, right? And you get together and talk and share stories, war stories and all that. What, <laughs> what's your, uh, what's your, you're thinking, this is kind of an unusual and different sort of place, isn't it? Based on what you're hearing from your it's, friends? It's very calm. Yeah? Which is kind of nice because sometimes you get caught up in running here and running there and doing this in the hospital and just a nice kind of sit back and appreciate what you're doing. Get a little bit of time to think and mm -hmm. process things. Huh? Okay. Is that your experience, Katie? Well, I mean, compared to other places, they don't have like the DBT and mm -hmm. the yoga and yeah. the, all the group therapies and... Yeah, kind of um, unusual things here. Yeah, definitely. Reiki. Reiki, yeah. yep, all that good Have stuff. Have you taken advantage of a Reiki session yet? Not yet. But we're it's going we to. <laughs> Talk to Julie, yeah. So. Yeah, so you're on definitely the future, that. hopefully. Yeah. And you've been attending the DBT groups? Yeah. The yeah. morning group. Only. Morning group. We've Tuesday been do it, running them at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And you're doing them also at the hospital. And the hospital you're talking about is Torrance, correct? Correct. Okay. Are you going to any other locations outside of St. Clair? Just here in Torrance. Here in Torrance. So what's been your experience with, with running DBT groups at Torrance? I actually really like Torrance. Yeah. And I think, I mean, not that I like it more or less. I just really feel like I'm making a bigger impact mm -hmm. when I'm there because people are really, like, the patients want you there and the mm -hmm. patients are very responsive to the students being there. So I really enjoy that aspect. Mm -hmm. okay. So are you running a group? Mm -hmm. Out there, um, who are you running the group with? Just the two of you. Ourselves. <laughs> You're doing it together. Just, just the two. Of you. Good for you. Yeah. Okay. And so, how many people do you have uh, attending your group? Depends. I think the entire it's for the entire floor, which has 26 patients. But okay. I mean, we get anywhere from I would say 15 at to least 20. yeah. I'd say a small group. I mean, they come in and out too mm -hmm. with other things going on. But yeah, there's a good majority of the patients there. How much your experience been with that? Very positive. Yeah. yeah, they seem to really enjoy it. Now, I think we could tell them to do anything, and they'd try it yeah. at least once and see what they get out of it. So. Yeah, well, then we could have that in all areas of our life, huh? Yeah, they're they're so much more willing to participate than patients are here. Uh huh. <laughs> okay, so you, so you notice that difference? Yeah. yeah. You mean in terms of the group? Well, you've been to yeah. the DBT group here, so they they get more into the activities and they talk more about their experiences. Mm -hmm. Okay. They all have something to say about everything. <laughs> about everything. Yeah. <laughs> Got any, any stories for us that you can tell without violating any confidentiality? I mean, they do some really good mindfulness there. Yeah. The patients often yeah. lead them, and it's, I don't know, it's neat to see their perspective of yeah. like, what their <laughs> relaxing environment is and how to, like, yeah. go about mindfulness and stuff. It's... A lot of them are really good and relaxing, and some of them are just kind of neat to experience <laughs> what they think so it is. They've so. been expanding your perspective of things. It sounds like yes. Uh, what was your What was your expectation when you when you went out there? You're going to a, a state hospital. There aren't too many of those left. You're dealing with patients, clients who who are really struggling, who are really, really having difficult problems. So difficult that they can't live at home. They can't live out of a facility, and uh, what was your thought about that the first time you went? First time we walked in, I was a little bit scared, yeah. <laughs> because I'd never been in an environment like that. Yeah. I didn't know 
what to expect. I didn't know if they were violent. I didn't know if they were going to respond to me. If it's a little bit of an intimidating building, if I recall. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. It's not very warm and fuzzy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, we didn't build those places to be warm and fuzzy. No, no, yeah, we didn't, we didn't. put them out in the, the middle of wire. And <laughs> yeah, 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 the big field almost, almost around. like a prison. Huh? That was actually my first uh, when first starting here. I had to visit out there, and mm-hmm. it was like. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Have you been out there, James? Yes. Uh, That's right. You do music out there. Yeah, I do music. Everyone uh, loves my, my name is James Buckley, and I'm part of the Seclair uh, uh, experience here. And uh, I must say that, uh, you know, I was a bit scared the first time that I, you know, walked in here. I didn't know what to expect. And, you know, you, you can only imagine things like that until you actually get in front of it. But, but uh you know, you met. You mentioned how they, they they built them to look like prisons, and mm-hmm. and they built them so they're not really warm and fuzzy. Well, I, you know, when I hear that, I say, you know what? That's probably some something to think about because with the approach that Seclair takes with the holistic uh, ways of, of working with people beyond medications and traditional methods, that maybe the environment. If it was a little bit friendly might also help as well as long as it's safe and you know no one can get hurt if we were somewhere to make it a little bit more pleasant to the eye we're, we're pleasing the ears with the music mm-hmm. we're pleasing their bodies with yoga let's please their eyes with a nice comfortable place that mm-hmm. they f- sort of feels like a home to them and yeah, maybe and some warm colors and yes some colors. exactly yeah. instead of so cold as it is yeah. you know when, when, you, when you're in a place that's cold like that you feel cold mm-hmm. you don't feel warm mm-hmm. and fuzzy yeah. so um, there's something to be said for that i think yeah. So you've been out there when James has been out there playing music? Yeah. And, and really? So what do, you, what do you notice when he's there? What happens with the, with the clients? They all love it because yeah. they love him. Mm-hmm. James, you can tell James loves it, I think, is why. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what our listeners can't see is this great big grin on yeah. his face. Yeah. From which, is, hey, which you see every time he starts talking about it, too. <laughs> it really, really. I can't help it. I, I mean, you know, you, you saw when I was there uh, yesterday, I, I told them that I love them all. I, they're like children to me, and, mm-hmm. and they really are. And, you know, that's how I feel, and that's how I approach it. And they, they treat me. They treat me really well, and and you know, I, I didn't expect that yeah. to come back to me in that way, you know. But it's really happening. They really are real people yeah. with real emotions, and really have care for other people and other things. And yeah. I think that's that helps their, uh, you know, their therapy is being able to feel like yeah. they can care for somebody you being know? able to be responded to by you and by the students and by people who come there and say you know we want to be a part of your lives and we want you to be part of our lives yeah and, and, I, and I and I said to them as soon as I walked in I said I almost didn't make it you know and the, the, I said what if I don't make it someday and a big <laughs> big groan you know all, this, all at the same time I said, oh come on you I said well if I get sick or something you know, I, I, I don't want to miss it I really do look forward to it and you know, it's every every day. It's every every week I go there. It's it's a bit of therapy. Yeah, for me and you as bring well. in some sunshine and and some hopefulness to them. And your songs that, that you you sing your songs that you yeah, very awesome. very hopeful, very um, uh, heartfelt, very deep, very soulful um, music that it sounds like they're really relating to. As you're speaking to what's real in their lives as well. They do, and and uh, I've performed uh, a lot of the, my own material for other people mm-hmm. and you know they, there's always connections going on but here I'm connecting with people in, in, in there and I say to myself you know what they, they're you know what so what's wrong with that why, why can't they who says that they can't feel the same way that other people feel about stuff and mm-hmm. can't talk about it and relate it mm-hmm. and, and that's what they do so just because somebody is having so much difficult with difficulty with uh, managing emotional regulation or their behavior that they can't live at home or they can't live in the community doesn't mean that they don't feel that they don't care about themselves and about each other you see that there you know they're responding to you on that level i think the music really brings out a different side of them too Mm -hmm. it's like yesterday i got up and i was dancing with them and having a good time and afterwards um one of the patients came up to me and said, you know, if you weren't up there dancing, I wouldn't have been either. And just, mm-hmm. and he, he's kind of an intimidating guy too. Mm-hmm. And for him to say that, 
yeah. really see a different side. Yeah, that meant something to you too. Mm -hmm. I can see. Yeah, you stretched him, and he gave you a perception of things that you hadn't had before, mm -hmm. in terms of what's real for these patients. That's neat. Yeah, that was really rewarding. Yeah. So, are they do, do you feel? I mean, b between you guys and, and the patients, there, uh, how does it go during the day? I mean, you know, before I get there, what's it like? I mean, is it? Is it the same? Does some does you know? Do they interact with you well, or feel? Do they look at you as an outsider, or do they feel like connected to you somehow? Like you're more of a just someone that they can trust. I think at first they're shy, just like we are. But mm -hmm. now, at first we were the ones that would be like, "Oh hi, how are you?" Like, "Oh hi," like approach them. And now a lot of them approach me and say, "Hi, how are you?" Like, mm -hmm. like we're more companions like than we're friends. Yeah, like they accept us now. No why we're there and that we're so just, just there to talk and help and yeah. they treat you differently you think than the staff that are there all the time so you notice a difference yes yeah so they, they they live in the i mean the world doesn't really change too much for them yeah. uh i was discussing this uh before that 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 they you know there's so many walls there's so many rooms that they're accustomed mm -hmm. to going to and of course we know that they're kind of cold and not really warm and fuzzy mm -hmm. but you know that's that's their whole life every day and then when someone comes in from the outside like us uh, that's a little bit of like opening a window for them mm -hmm. you know to let yeah. some sunshine a little come world in. coming in and yeah, manageable exactly. doses exactly and, they, and yeah. they take that they well, for what it's worth mm -hmm. and then when it's over they they say okay that was nice that was good and they know it's going to come back mm -hmm. so it gives them some sort of hope because they don't have much in, in their confinement you know the, there's not much to hope for they have to deal with mm -hmm. each other and the staff and it's a very small area to do that mm -hmm. so I think they enjoy you know, students coming in and others yeah. and well. so you're also teaching them some skills to manage those relationships that they have to have day in and day out mm -hmm. when they get annoyed with each other you know, trying to decide who's going to get to sit in that chair, who's going to get to decide what's on TV, who's going to who's going to get uh, in line first at the cafeteria. Yeah, they, they are like children. That's yeah, absolutely. You know, and and how do we resolve conflicts? And so, what are you teaching them in your DBT classes? What are the what are the skills that you're working on? Um, well, just this week we talked a lot about um, give. We did give in our big DBT group and talked a lot about how to initiate. Mm -hmm. conversations with people. If you don't know what GIVE stands for, it's um, you want to be gentle, mm -hmm. show interest in what you're talking about, validate the other person, and use an easy manner when mm -hmm. conversing. So, so some, some real practical skills in how to approach another person in, uh, in a non-threatening way, in a way that, mm -hmm. that they're going to want to be with you. And they responding to that? They were I'm very knowledgeable. Yeah? Yeah. They knew, half of them knew what it was. They already knew what it was. They did So they taught us. us. <laughs> some too. So did you do some, uh, some role play and behavior rehearsal in the group? We did. We split in like pairs and did yeah. examples and they did great. I mean, I actually, we were uneven for patient numbers, so I partnered up with one of the patients. Mm -hmm. And I think she dominated the conversation and did very well, where I thought I would have to lead it yeah. and like urge her into, nope, she let it, we stayed on topic, she validated me, I validated her, <laughs> was interested, it was, she did great, so that's it was great. like, I learned something too. So. Something too. That's, the best, that's the best healing relationship when both people get a chance to learn something. Mm -hmm. and grow. That's great. So you're both in this program for five and a half weeks, and then you go on to your next rotation. Uh, what, do you know what that's going to be? I get a general surgery. General surgery? Where do you go? Um, OB-GYN. OB okay. Do you have an idea of what kind of specialty you're looking for when you graduate? You think you know, <laughs> and then you don't. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we just have to be open to all the experiences. Yeah. And yeah. What you so what did you think you knew before you started? I thought I was going to be gung-ho, go surgery, mm -hmm. and I enjoy it, and I did a little bit my last rotation, mm -hmm. but I think after doing internal medicine, you kind of get, you develop those relationships with patients, and you don't just see them for 15 minutes and then never again. When they're unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> and draped, you yeah. get to see one little part of them. Yeah, so you're enjoying the, the interactions, the, the patient care, the mm -hmm. real eye-to-eye -eye stuff, and your experience uh, here at C. Claire and at, at uh, 
the Torrance is really going to put you in good stead as an internist, you know, somebody who can pick up on psychological distresses that uh, other doctors may not be real clear on, you know. What do you, what do you think you've learned so far that's, gonna, that's, that's really going to be a, a boon to that kind of uh, understanding for you? Um, Dr. Chaudhry is big on knowing the DSM criteria, mm-hmm. like the back of your hand. So I think that'll <laughs> kind of help us out in the future. Yeah, yeah. And and for those who don't know what DSM is, it's the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual that that uh, of of um, mental illnesses, and it basically is the the descriptions of uh, the problems that people present with. And uh, so that we can, when we're talking about them, we can all be talking about the same thing and know that uh, you know, we're on the same page with that. And it helps us think about how, uh, what the, the prognosis is, what the course of treatment would be, and uh, what the etiology of the disorder is. So it's really important to know that. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's a lot of material to digest. That, that DSM manual is a, is a big sucker. That's yeah, <laughs> awful. Like 10 pounds <laughs> to carry around. And a new one is coming out uh, very soon, which uh, will be revealing you know, some new categories and uh, understandings of, of uh, behavioral issues and mental health issues. So, so Katie, funny. what are you looking to do for your career? I mean, I really, I actually enjoyed, my first rotation was my general surgery. I really enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So you're doing OBGYN next? I am. You're going to get called at all hours of the day and night? Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> it's so rewarding, though. <laughs> did you do yours already? I just had that. You did it? That was the one right before this. Did you get to deliver some babies? Yeah, I got, well, I got to help. Yeah. So, kind of catch them. <laughs> 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 I love that part though. I loved it. You love that part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Getting called at three in the morning routinely probably isn't so much fun though. Because babies well, like to be born at odd hours. I mean, I actually haven't been on call for any of no. my rotations. So, no. yeah. We sort of, a couple of ours are a distance away as well. So, mm-hmm. we really can't be oh, an hour away. So, by the time I make it there, it would be too late. Yeah. <laughs> So you're, st- you're still not sure what your ultimate aim is, huh? No, I mean, yeah. I'm, I I know what I don't want. I would say more than what I do. But <laughs> right now, I still got a lot to go, so. Yeah, well, knowing what so you don't want is just as important as knowing what you do want. Process of elimination. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so you um, mentioned that, that, that the patients were different that you saw here in the outpatient setting in terms of, of how they approach DBT. Or have you noticed in, in other ways? You, you've had a chance to sit in on some, some uh, sessions or some evaluations that were done. Have you had a chance to do any of that yet? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You mean like counseling? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So what's your, what's your impression of the differences there? It's nice. The majority of patients will let us sit in too. Mm-hmm. Some of them don't feel comfortable doing that, but mm-hmm. I don't know, I'd say the inpatients compared to the outpatients are just more open mm-hmm. and willing to share pretty much anything and everything, whereas your outpatients are still sort of trying to hold mm-hmm. that exterior. Yeah. Up the front. Keep, They're more keep worried that persona about the together. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Um, but also we can see that sometimes when people are very open, that's not always appropriate. You know? and how many times have you been on a public transportation or someplace where you walk off the bus and you have someone's social history in your pocket because they told you their life story and the half hour ride you had mm-hmm. you know and, and we can say wow they're really open but that's a level of openness that's mm-hmm. not really going to serve them well uh, and it's not that's really secure. safe for them yeah so um, we have to think about context of openness as well so um, yeah those things are, are always tricky but I'm glad you've had the experience that you've had at Torrance. That's great. So we uh, tend to put the, the, the students through different kinds of paces here at, uh, <laughs> at C. Claire. They're sometimes digging uh, in the garden. Have you had a chance to do that yet? Yeah, I'm doing a 
season changed. It's and snow's a little deterrent. <laughs> snow's a deterrent, but yeah, well, you should talk to Sandy. That's no deterrent for her when she's mm-hmm. out there in the rain. Mm-hmm. Run out barefoot. That's That's true, barefoot yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're lucky she didn't have you out there digging, uh, digging weeds in the mud or something. And you'll probably miss the chickens, but when they come, they'll be the yeah, students out there. Soon, yeah. coming. You may you may be here then when the chickens come. So yeah, um, experience. That. And how about uh, in the kitchen? Have you been part of a cooking team? At I all? I helped cook today. Did you help cook today? Help Sandy. So what did you make? <laughs> what was it called? Did you make the main dish? No. Nope. Oh, the one. The, the one that Sandy made with the, with fruit, the fruit and. Oh, quinoa. Quinoa, yes. That's <laughs> that one. Quinoa, that one. The one with the weird name that doesn't look like yeah. it's not spelled the way it sounds. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it should be quinoa. <laughs> I, I, had, calls I it. had no idea of quinoa before I came. I never heard of it until today. today. Yeah. yeah, it's a very ancient uh, grain. Apparently, mm-hmm. the Mayans used. I guess it's great for you. Yeah, it's very good for you. Yeah, tastes good too. Yeah. 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 And so, what part of that did you make? Well. <laughs> <laughs> I I did a lot of the cutting. I cut the fruits and helped add the ingredients. What all was in there? There were there's mandarin mandarin oranges? oranges, pineapple, Ooh. shallots, shallots. Green pepper. Yeah. Yeah. No, no pepper. What else? Oh, then it was just the then it was just chicken broth. Mm. There was a um, a garlic like spread. What is the like the stuff you can squirt out of the bottle? Mm. Squirtable garlic. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? The paste. Garlic paste. paste. Garlic paste. Okay, so you mixed it all together. Mm, all right, so we've had you cooking. Have you done any cooking yet? No, I don't think they want me to. <laughs> 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 I wasn't really gifted in that area. Oh, we do have some gifted cooks here. That's true. But, you know, gifts are, you know, you can pick it up, you know. You can't say just because you didn't do it before, you can't do it. So I'll be doing other things, uh, putting packets and things together and all kinds of different tasks, but cooking is a, is a big one around here. We like to eat. Yeah, we like to so feed each other. That was a lot of food that we went through today. We did. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's anything like <laughs> So I'm curious, what do you what do you tell your friends and people about this place when you leave here? I mean, <laughs> I, know, I know I have some experiences trying to explain what I do to <laughs> my friends and I work here. <laughs> What do we tell them? I don't know. It's an experience. You t- they'll ask you to say, well, wow, what's that place like? What's it like there? You know? It's <laughs> different. I mean, it's sort of hard to explain. It's a lot of, especially compared to like past rotations, this is just a lot of listening and observing and mm-hmm. sort of the experience, the yoga and the DBT and the music mm-hmm. and the cooking. So it's just sort of, I don't even have to enjoy it. I'm More just, than other ones. Do, do you say it's 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 a piece of cake or? It's <laughs> 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 no, I mean because we get topics every week and stuff that we have to learn. We will challenge. So we definitely yeah. learn. Yeah. But at the same time, we're learning the little thing, the yoga, and right. mm-hmm. yeah. the mindfulness mm-hmm. stuff you really don't see outside of here. So. No, and then and that's that's part of the uh, initiative is to try to uh, explore those areas a little bit more so that. We see how effective they are in with with people and treating them mm-hmm. beyond the traditional methods that we have. And then we also use those skills ourselves. You know, mm-hmm. we can't sure. we can't just uh, you know tell people you got to do this and then not do it yourself. Mm-hmm. So having a chance to it's you know, it's work nice. On Doc it. joins in on our yoga yeah. often, yeah. so it's neat to see that what he recommends. He does yeah, the DBT he groups. He. Yeah. Yeah, does the meditation. Mm-hmm. I think I've learned more for myself how to control my anxiety than giving back to others. I think we all have anxiety, sure. Yeah, got to work it. And that's something that, that, you know, patients, clients often don't believe, you know, they don't realize that we're somehow, we know it all, and we're all perfect, and we don't have problems in our lives. But the reality is everybody struggles. Everybody has problems. You know, there's a, a great saying that uh, I heard recently that comes from AA, don't compare your outsides with other people's insides, which I really like. And it's mm-hmm. so easy to do that. You know, It's so easy to look out there and, and see, hey, everybody else looks like they're having a great life and looks like they're all put together and, and I feel so lousy and you know, I'm having all these problems, but that's my insides. And mm-hmm. you know, if you stopped all those people and sat them down and had a conversation like we're having today, like what's going on in your life? You know, What are the, what are the stressors? They'd be telling you all kinds of things. That they're struggling with. You know? but we don't wear our insides on our outsides most of the time. And so we look all put together and <laughs> sharp and great to those <laughs> folks out there. So that's a good thing to think about. 
All right, well, thank you. I'm glad that you're here. Um, students come and go pretty quickly, and we get attached to them, and then, ah, they got to go. And, <laughs> finally learn our names. <laughs> finally learn our names, yes. This is really fun for me. Yeah, finally learn your names. But we learn your souls a lot sooner than we learn your names, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And so that's always a treat for us to have you. And well, thank you for having name. us. Yeah, yeah definitely. And we always hope that you'll come back and visit again, and uh, also that if you decide after all your rotations that psychiatry is really the place for you, <laughs> uh, this is where you want to be. Then. Or taking care of chickens is really fun. That's right. right. <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe we'll have a, a new specialty of chicken psychiatry. <laughs> you know, and, uh, mm. and talk to the vegetables and you know, make sure that we're <laughs> sure healthy, growing healthy whole, holistic vegetables. You know. But uh, definitely think about that and come back and see us. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining us for, uh, on, uh, on the Chatterbox. <laughs> uh, please go to uh, sclera.com for past episodes. And uh, you know, when we're going to record live, we're going to start uh, you know, for people to be able to chime in a little bit uh, uh, you know, as we record these, because uh, we do it every second Friday of, of the month. Uh, we do a batch of these. Uh, if you have any comments or ideas for future episodes, want to participate, please uh, drop us an email at mike at seclair.com. And uh, please continue the conversation on our blog in the comments for this episode at seclair.com slash blog. And we'll see you guys next time in the chatterbox.